Let's do this! Dirty Smith, episode 16. The hand gestures. I don't know sign language, so if I did, I would assume, you know, it's five, six, seven, eight, so 16. It's dirty sign language, we'll say. So I typically film these after work, after a long day. I'm in here on a Sunday. Shop is empty. It's just how I like it. I opened up the view so you can kind of see the shop behind me. We got some dramatic lighting going on. That's all right. It's fun. Sets the mood. Dirty Smith. It's going to be on TV. So me, Craig, and Mike Rowe will be on CNN. Somebody's got to do it. April 16th, 9 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. He has a new show. It's called Somebody's Got to Do It. And it's on CNN. I didn't already say that. I mentioned it's on CNN. He came down last September and they shot an episode here at the shop with me, Craig, the dog, you know, the whole fam family. And we forged a sign for the show. We had a great time, nice guy. And I have been waiting patiently for it to air. It feels like someone bigger than you is holding you down, giving you tiger taps for like the past six months. And you're just getting it over with. So, it should be here. Should be a link in the description that goes right to CNN's page with a little preview of Mike hanging out with us. Again, it's on CNN. I didn't know if I mentioned that, CNN. And if you are like, oh, Dory Smith, I don't get CNN. It's okay, don't worry. Go to their website. After the show airs on April 16th, you can watch it for free. I'm assuming on Friday. If any of the crew members are watching or anybody involved with the show, thank you so much. It was a great experience. We're very happy, very excited about it, and we can't wait. So this week's Dirty Smith, we're doing Intro to Eyes over the anvil. So without any more hesitation, let's do this. <laughs> So, I just went through this whole explanation of how to measure an eye, and what do you know? Camera wasn't on. Way to go, Dirty Smith. Okay, so what I had said before is that we're going to do an eye. We're going to forge an eye. But we need to change the way we think about it. And think about it as a bend. We're bending the material around. Hopefully your bends are better than my drawing. One of the tests we have in the shop is if you can forge an eye and you can forge the same eye repeatedly. Because sometimes you might have a project where you have an eye on one end of the bar and an eye on another bar. And you have to do this three times and from here to here needs to be the same space every time. Good example, uh, pot racks, chandeliers. Typically, you'll have a mount on top, at least, hopefully, three arms, and then the ring on the bottom, and these three need to be the same length, that way your chandelier hangs square and level. You need to figure out how much material do you need from this shoulder to this point. I'm taking consideration the ID measurement inside here, and in my situation, I have a piece of half inch round. And this ID needs to be one inch. So I have to consider the thickness of the material. So center line measurement, center line of this material, what is that diameter? Well, we got quarter inch, quarter inch being half of the material. So quarter, one quarter. So we're at one and a half. So to figure out the uh, circumference with what we have been given, we want to take the diameter and multiply it times pi. Mmm. Pi. Nom, 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 nom. So, back to this. So we have one and a half times the common 3.14, which equals, and there's no shame in using a calculator, calculator, K 
Peekulator, however you want to say it. This one has been seen some wear and tear. So we have our one and a half diameter times the 3.14, and we are at 4.71. In this shop, we'll say 4.71. To me, that's like four and three quarters, even though that's really 0.75. But I would mark four and three quarters, and then I would uh, cut the line wherever I mark it. So it'll be a little bit less. So with your stock, you'd measure from the end, and you'd measure back the four and three quarters in this situation. If I had a bunch of these to do, I would do one, get my material right, and if I had to do like more than 10, probably, I would make a jig and uh, get these done right away. It's totally your call if you wanna make a jig or not. But this is blacksmithing, tutorial, intro to. This is just how to forge a, an eye by hand. If you wanna make jig, go ahead and make a jig. And different ways you can mark it. You can use a center punch. You can come off to the edge of the anvil and put a little nick. You could have a uh, hardy tool and nick it. We'll just do that. Okay, I'm using a torch. If you don't have a torch, you're going to have to uh, get real control with your forge. We have forging and bending. You know, there's, there's a few things we can do to material. We can, there's only a few things we can do to material. We can forge it, so we're changing, manipulating the mass. We can bend it, we can cut it, and we can weld it. Some guys are like, well, twisting, you can twist it. Well, technically, twist is a bend. We're bending it on this plane compared to this plane. When you're doing eyes, we're doing controlled bends. We're doing a bend at the base, a bend at the tip, and then a bend in between the two points to bring this around. So bend it, don't forge it, we wanna bend it. So a glancing blow, just knocking it over, just bending it. And then the next one we wanna do is back here. And we'll uh, do that at the vise. If you don't have a vise, again, control T. Ah, f it, we'll do it right here. So we'll make sure that this is up because we want this to come around to our shoulder. Again, we're bending. I always go a little bit further than what I think I need. So there's the bottom of our eye. Next, we'll heat this part up and we'll bring this around. You're gonna bend, you're just bending it. Now, if I was forging it, I would be squishing it and squeezing it there. I'm just, just bending it. Keep an eye on the shape of it. Almost all the way there. Uh, what I don't like, I got a flat spot right here. And I like this first half here. But I just need to tighten that up and bring it around. Our goal, too, is not to have a teardrop of an eye. The more round, the more better. I'm also using the fire and the heat for some control as well. You know, I only want it to bend in a certain place. So, I only heated that front half now I'll heat the whole thing and tighten it up. Now again, you know, you're, you're straightening it up, you're cleaning it up. If I do too much foraging this way, I'll distort this and I don't want to do that. Yeah, we're just bending it. We're sighting down it, we're, we're seeing if that eye is on center or not. And also if we're in line this way. And if you're not, you can hang it off over the edge knock it around knock it around but you can always just look down it inside I don't know if you saw a damn ground squirrel what are you doing in here ground squirrel okay so we are right at one inch uh, one critique it's a little flat right here we could bend that a little bit more but I got a nice flat return coming into the shoulder 
Oh, that flatness is contributing to the teardrop eye. So if that was a little bit more, a little bit more true of a circle. It's in line there. Looks good that way. This is going to be the hanging hook for the chandelier I'm working on right now. So this this will be more than enough for uh, what I need. That's eyes. All right. So again, you're doing you're doing more of a bend than you are really forging. And again, the emphasis of what we're doing with blacksmithing is that it's control. You have to be in control of the material. So figure out your material, bend the tip first, bend the elbow first, connect the two points as cleanly as you can. But if you want something to practice, practice rolling eyes. Done well, they're very attractive. You can use them in a lot of different functions. And again, they look good. Uh, what else is going on? DirtySmith.com. Got new shirts, restocked old shirts, the Welder's Hero, and the Blacksmith shirt actually sold out really quick, so I ordered more, they're on their way. I need to get some more hats, ran out of hats. One gentleman asked, why don't you make a show every week, Dirty Smith? Well, if you don't know, it's kind of my full-time job. Sometimes there's just not enough time, you know. I got projects I have to get done. If I had more followers, that would might warrant me a little bit more energy to do more weekly tutorials. So if you want, share. I appreciate it. Do what I can when I can. I appreciate everybody who shares and the feedback, you know, it means a lot because I'm doing this for free. I'm trying to throw back to the community. There's a handful of other Smiths doing very interesting things, doing the same thing I'm doing, but a handful of you guys keep giving me the thumbs up so I really do appreciate that again you can find me on Instagram Twitter Tumblr Facebook YouTube I put links on the website now so you can see directly you know on dirtysmith.com there's a link to each social media I want to share that oh after the show so during the show I'll probably be tweeting live I'm not sure yet I'm not a big fan of Twitter but I might tweet live and then after the show, we'll do a little question and answer session. And feel free to ask any questions about what you guys saw. If you had questions about Mike or the film crew or how they found us, any of that. And uh, as we get closer to the day, I'll share a link to that as well. Uh, subscribe to the newsletter if you want to be updated. I'm probably going to start doing a monthly newsletter because of the conversations on Instagram. Uh... Those are going really well. You guys are do a great job answering them. We get a really good dialogue. I thought about maybe sharing some of those links to Dirty Smith's show, links to you know, information about shirts and ground squirrels. Till next time, keep it dirty.